Well, the Old Fashioned is one of those classic cocktails that was really, really important for me to do right. It was really important for me to master. And it was also, because it's so simple, uh, it's a drink that people pretty much know how to make themselves. So the eyes are kind of on you a little bit more when you make one because people kind of know how to make one for the most part. Um, it, was, it was a drink that, you know, when I started at the library bar at the Hollywood Roosevelt, a lot of people ordered it. They didn't want necessarily a mixed drink. They wanted something that was spirit forward. It was a, it's a great first drink to have. It's a great drink if you're not going to really eat anything as well, like you, maybe you've eaten already or you just really want to nurse this. And um, what's really interesting about it too is the history of this is really something that I don't know if you could say for sure where the origin is, right? So it goes back to the early 1800s and you know the, the true definition of a cocktail when it was first defined was it was a some spirit with sugar, bitters, and water. And that's pretty much what an old-fashioned is, right? It's simply that it's used with either bourbon or rye. And somehow it started to evolve, and I think it was in the late 1800s, around 1880 or so, it was in the Ch Chicago Tribune is when they first kind of put a name to it as the old-fashioned because it was a drink that people were drinking for years and years and years, and they didn't really want to deviate from that. So they kind of felt like they really wanted it the old-fashioned way you know, just the way that it was originally made. And that's really how that name kind of came about from what we really know, you know, because there is a, also another circumstance where there's a bartender in Louisville, Kentucky, who truly believes in the 1800s, late 1800s, that he created the recipe for the old fashioned and created the old fashioned. And it was there that it was brought to the Waldorf Astoria in New York and kind of, you know, made its way through the United States and New York and became popular. So it's hard to say, but I can tell you for sure that when Madman came out, whatever that was, you know, 10 years ago or so, that really was something that started to really make the old fashioned popular. And this is a lot of things like the shaken martini of James Bond or like the cosmopolitan and sex in the city where you have like something that is that pulp pop culture is really driving these things to be reintroducing the classics to people and it's a way of putting a spotlight on those again and, re and introducing people to those so this is the same thing it became very very popular and I also think that um, it's one of those drinks that um, once I knew how to do I loved having fun with making different ones and I still do to this day so let's let's start it's a very simple cocktail it originally started with putting one sugar cube in there I'm just not a fan I don't know if there's a lot of people that do that anymore I could be wrong but the problem with the sugar cube is and you would put the sugar cube in you would put a little bit of soda water it would help dissolve it but by the time you were stirring I just remember like taking the glass and looking up there was so much undissolved sugar at the bottom of that and I felt like it wasn't really sweetening the drink or by the time you got down to the bottom it was super sweet so there was something that wasn't kind of smooth and consistent throughout and um, so I just I just naturally started making an agave syrup I have a video on how to do that it's really simple it's just a one-to-one -one ratio of agave nectar to water so let's do that let's build it what I love about the old-fashioned too it might be one of the only few classic cocktails that you actually build in the glass. So we're gonna build this in a double old-fashioned glass, which is typically what this is called, or a rocks glass. And the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put an eighth of an ounce of the agave syrup. You can go up to a quarter of an ounce. Um, I also am, yeah, we'll get to that, but I also am gonna use a rye instead of a bourbon. So what's important too is you can use both. There's a preference of why you would use a rye over a bourbon. So something to be called a bourbon has to have at least 51% corn in it, has to be aged in a brand new charred American oak barrel for at least two years, and has to be from Kentucky. A rye is pretty much exactly the same, except it has to have at least 51%, it has to be made from at least 51% rye. Now, both these ryes and bourbons can have more than 51% in them, but that's what it has to be. And why you would probably go with a rye whiskey is ryes tend to be a little bit more spicy and then they're a little bit drier. They're not as sweet as a bourbon because bourbons are made from corn. So that might be a personal preference of why you would want to choose that because you are adding sugar to it. So let's first start. We'll do the agave syrup, which is, like I said, it's a one-to-one -one ratio of a nectar to water. I'm going to put an eighth of an ounce in here, which I think works really well. 
and then you're going to use Angostura bitters. That's typically the bitters that you use for old fashioned. But of course, once you master something like this, that's when you can play and do different things with it. But Angostura is a rum based spirit. It's made, it's 40% alcohol. It's got all different kinds of cinnamon barks and woods in it and cinnamons and different things like that uh, infused into it. And that's what gives it those spices. But we're going to go, typically, you can go about two dashes. I'm going to go about four or five because you can't really overdo the, old, the bitters in an old fashioned. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. Put that in there. And again, I'm going to use, um, this is a new rye whiskey called Blue Run. They came out with an amazing uh, aged uh, 13 and a half year bourbon last year. I'm going to use two ounces of that. And that's it. That is your cocktail, right? There's your sugar, spirit, and bitters pretty much, right? And for the most part, the big cube is like an essential thing for old fashioned. I know there's many people that will come to a bar. If these people don't have a big ice cube, they're not going to order their old fashioned. So this is a two by two by two and a half size cube. Um, you can make these in molds. I get these, which amazing because it's a, um, they use like a re reverse osmosis water system and they create a density, which takes a very long time for these molds, I mean for this ice to melt. And then you're going to stir it. So listen, here's a bar spoon, right? So you, you do hold this somewhat like a chopstick and you kind of go back and forth, but you could always use the back of it if you're not so proficient in the bar spoon. You could use that. To you could also use a steel chopstick or a wooden chopstick or the back of this bar spoon that's used for juleps. And you don't have to stir it old fashioned very long. Now this typically did have an orange zest on it and was garnished with cherries. And I think when you got into the war and after the war in the 40s and 50s, that's when they started um, muddling these orange slices and these cherry slices. But this is what they call a true old fashioned old fashioned, where it's just the spirit, the sugar and the bitters, and we are going to use a orange and a lemon slice. So what I always do when I do any kind of peel over it is I'll, I start peeling it over the drink so those oils or anything go right into the drink. Then I literally just take it and press it back and forth. I'll do this along where you might taste it, and I'll do the exact same thing with the lemon. And because we've done that and that's in there, I like to give it maybe one stir. All right, let's give that a taste. And there it is. There's the old fashioned. Very simple. It's got, it usually has that nice kind of, becomes like a nice light brown color. Now listen, you could use an old fashioned with rum, tequila, but this is a classic old fashioned. Mmm. It's strong. The bitters, what's great about the bitters and the, the whole purpose of bitters is bigger, bitters are used to bridge flavors together. And that's what it is. It's taking the rye and the sugar and it's kind of bringing it together. It's perfect. It's a great sipper. It's a great first drink. It's a great drink before a meal or your first drink of the, the day that you might not have a lot of drinks. Maybe you can. I don't know. I can't have more than one. But um, it's fantastic and it's really, really simple. And the thing that's great about this is once you master this, then you can have fun with it. So that's what I encourage you to do. Master this, then you can infuse the bourbons, then you can infuse the bitters. You can, there's all different kinds of bitters out there. You can use different sugars and make different syrups. And that's, what has, that's when you start having fun because it's always fun to master something and then put your spin on it. So have fun with it, cheers, and enjoy. Mm.